Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're working on our Invest Arms Gemmer Hawken kit. In particular today, we're going to be working on the barrel. As this barrel comes, it's a really clean barrel. Um, it's something that is nice to see on a production kit. There really aren't a lot of milling or cutting marks from where they produce uh, this barrel, but we still want to go through and do what we call draw filing on the barrel to get it to match the finish of the rest of our parts so we get a nice even finish on it once we do our bluing or in this case with this kit our browning solution we don't want these parts to look too mismatched and cobbled together uh, we want this to be a uniform kit so we want the barrel to match the rest of the hardware now i've talked about draw filing a little bit on some other videos uh, mainly our kibler southern mountain rifle uh, i think i had a whole video about that talking about the process so we're going to talk about it in brief in this video and if you want to dive in a little bit deeper i encourage you to check out that video even though it's a different kit i assure you the draw filing process is going to be the same Full disclosure, I want to say muzzlers.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. So this is the barrel as it came and as it has sat in the shop as we've been working on this kit. Uh, you'll notice I have our touch hole liner in here and I have a piece of tape over it to keep any dust or anything out of there. You can take this out for your draw filing or you can leave it in. It's kind of up to you. A lot of times putting in the touch hole liner is going to be one of the last steps that you do. Um, but you just want to make sure if you do leave it in that you clear that touch hole liner before you try to go out and, and shoot for your first time with your kit. Now, if you're like me and it's been a little while since you took this out of the box, you're going to notice possibly this isn't going to happen to everybody depending on the climate that you're in, but we have a little bit of surface rust forming on this just because this hasn't been oiled really since it left the factory. Uh, we're not worried about that at all because we're going to go through and brown this and draw file it. It's going to clean up that rust uh, anyway. And really on a muzzleloader surface rust is going to happen if you want to keep your muzzleloader looking bright and shiny for your whole life. It's best not to shoot it. Uh, to, it's best to then to keep it on the wall and keep it oiled if that's what you want to do. But in this case, it's going to be a user muzzleloader. So I'm not worried about it. Like I said, we're going to take off a lot of that surface rust uh, with our draw filing anyway. If this is your first time draw filing your barrel, I recommend that you start on a minimally visible surface. So I'm going to start with, as if this is my first time doing it, I'm going to start with one of our side faces back in here. It's a face that we're going to see a little bit, you know, the kind of the top half of as this lays in the stock. But I'm not going to start with one of the top faces that's very visible. Just so we get a little bit of practice in and we get an idea of what this process is like before we get into where it's visible and we can make some mistakes. I'm using a large flat file like this one. I like this because I get a lot of cutting surface when I'm using a big file like this. It's not an aggressive file because as you can see here, we don't need an aggressive file. We're just getting some finish in here that makes the, the barrel itself look like the other parts that we've worked on. So we don't need an aggressive file here. Depending on you know what kind of barrel you get, if you get uh, an order, you know, a series of custom barrels, they might not necessarily be as polished as this one is. You know, so you might need to start with a more aggressive file if you're doing something like that. But for this kit, uh, we're very fortunate and, and it's pretty clean, which is neat. I've got it clamped into my vise here with a couple leather pads to hold onto the barrel. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm not messing up the flats on this barrel. And they're nice and clean, they're nice and machined. We don't want to mess that up. So what I like to do is I like to set my file on the barrel like this one. Notice I'm at an angle. We don't want to try to draw a file like this. It's going to put a lot of waves in our barrel and it's, it's going to make it look a little bit funky. So to preserve those curves, just like all of our other filing, we want to cock that file at an angle. As severe of an angle as you can comfortably get, I think, is what you want. And then as it's sitting there, I'm bringing in my dominant hand, my right hand here, and I'm lining up my index finger on the top flat of that barrel. And I'm going to use this to guide my file. I'm indexing my index finger like this with the barrel, and I'm going to bring it back underneath my file, and I'm going to bring my hand up until I contact my file and I'm gonna grip it with my thumb. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side over here. We're gonna run into our lugs, which isn't going to be comfortable, 
So we're not gonna be able to get as close on our left hand side as we are on our right, but that's okay. We'll make the best of it. And from there, just keeping even consistent pressure. When it comes to draw filing, you wanna make sure that you're not doing more work than you absolutely have to. And what I mean by that is you only need to draw file the faces on your barrel that are gonna be visible when the kit is assembled. So for this kit, that's mainly gonna be the entire length of the top three facets where your sight is and each of the angled faces on either side of that. And then as we get out here to about the front half of the barrel, you see our front sight dovetail there, from pretty much this point here, we're gonna do every face as it goes out to the muzzle. We have our barrel rib down here. Because this is not a full stock muzzle loader, we don't get to cheat and not do those bottom three faces. So for about half the barrel, really from about halfway between our sights back, we only need to do the top three faces here and maybe touch up the side faces a little bit. But then from that point forward, where we get into what would be our nose cap area, we need to do the entire barrel. Now you wanna watch the dovetails for your sights with your index finger because those are sharp and they're gonna nick your fingers a little bit. So just be a little careful as you come up to those just so you're not running into them. And when you're doing this, it's important to clean out your file pretty regularly because you don't want that to make any file tracks in your barrel. You want this to be nice and clean. I mean, if you're good, you can probably get away with just filing and not even using your sandpaper if you get a good enough finish. That's always kind of my goal haven't gotten there yet, but we'll get there someday. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to kind of sight down my barrel, just checking that I have each area covered before I move on. There you go. That's in pretty real time what it takes to do an entire face of your barrel. Zoomed in here now, you can see a little bit the grain structure of that filing over here where the light's not reflecting. And look at that in contrast to how it comes from the factory here. You can see how that light is reflecting off of there. Very smooth, very modern uh, finish on that. It's kind of cut and clean. And then here we have some grain structure from our file. Now we can go back through now on the flat. And just as an example, you can come in here with your sandpaper, file back sandpaper, and hit that flat and, uh, and go that route. I recommend though, going through and draw filing each face and getting it matching before you decide if you wanna come through with your sandpaper. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the texture that we have on here, just with that file. Uh, we don't have any ruts or anything, um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about that. Now all we need to do is go do the rest of the faces. So I'm going to spare you on that one, uh, show you some clips here and there. But this is a really simple process that I think everybody should be doing on their barrels, especially on this kit. Uh, but it's going to get you ready for other muzzleloader kits down the road if you choose to continue building. So I'm going to flip this around, start working on the next face here. It's the, it's the kind of 11 o'clock face as we're looking at the sights here. And uh, we'll get boogie in. With that, we should talk about the markings on the barrel real quick. I like to leave these on these kits uh, just in case down the road, you know, somebody else picks this up as their first muzzleloader uh, and they have an idea here of what this is and, and what it can take. 
Um, now these markings can be considered kind of farby if you're into the living history a reenacting community. Uh, I see some guys online take them off uh, with filing and, and sanding and that's fine if that's what you want to do. Uh, it, it is your kit. Uh, I like to leave it on there and with the finish that we're going to do with our browning it's not going to be super obvious and I found the same with bluing. Uh, as we darken this barrel the light face starts to get a little bit closer to the the deep cut or stamp that we see in the letters there and it's not so obvious as it is now because of the bright white barrel. That's up to you though. I'm going to be leaving this on and that's kind of generally what I recommend people do. So <laughs> that lettering on there isn't as deep as I thought it was. It's not as deep as some of the other kits that are out there. Uh, I'm actually going to end up taking it off now because we've we've removed a little bit of it here and there. Um, so, you know, no big deal. Just keep keep on trucking. Here's how our barrel lays in the stock. You can see we have four flats cleaned up. Have a little bit of a funky area back here I need to touch up. But as we come around, you can see here that these side faces are pretty visible as this sits in the stock. And then out here, I'm gonna mark with my pencil just a touch, kind of where our nose cap starts and stops, at least the wood section here. Just so I know I don't need to go past here any on our draw filing on this underside. So I'm moving on now to this side face. I'm not concerned about this face down in here that you can kind of see at all. Uh, that's going to be covered I believe by our pan and things. So not a big deal back in there. I'm just going to leave it as it comes. But we're going to touch up this face and then shift into our bottom three faces. Now all we need to do is go do the rest of the faces. So I'm gonna spare you on that one, uh, show you some clips here and there, but this is a really simple process that I think everybody should be doing on their barrels, especially on this kit, uh, but it's gonna get you ready for other muzzleloader kits down the road if you choose to continue building. As I was filing my touch hole liner, was making my file skip a little bit. So I'm popping my touch hole out so I can get a nice even finish on my filing. You can see there around our touch hole, we have a different light face refracting light there. And uh, we don't want that. It's meant to be nice and even. So by popping that out now, we can make that a nice even face. I want to point this out really quick. Each face that I've done, I just have one more, has some kind of divot out here at the front that's affecting how I can draw file this. I'm thinking this is some kind of indentation, although my, kind of microscopic really, uh, from some kind of clamp used to hold this barrel in place as it was either drilled or rifled. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as you're out here under the muzzle. I've done a decent job, I think, of hiding it on the other flats, but it's just something you might want to take a little extra care on this kit in particular out here at the muzzle to get that little indentation removed. Now I have all the faces or the exposed faces draw filed. Now I'll have an even finish, uh, but it's not I'm still seeing a little bit more contrast than I want out of it, so I am going to go through with my 240 grit sandpaper here, and we're just going to treat each face with just a little bit of that sandpaper, and this is going to take away a little bit of the contrast in those file marks, make this a little bit more of a dull shine. going to make it a little bit of more of an even surface as well. Again, something that you don't have to go through and do, but it is going to, it's going to change the look of things a little bit. And you'll notice I'm holding 
the file back sandpaper the same way I do my file making sure that it's nice and indexed with the flat so we're not messing those up And I'm taking this all the way to the muzzle out here. So here are two faces that we've sanded and polished a little bit. And here are two just draw filed faces. So you can see a little bit more texture on these two, more so than you can on these that have been sanded. This just adds, I don't know, 10 15 minutes to the entire process but I think it really it's one of those things that it looks nice you know and like I say a lot you know you're building this once to come through and build it again is going to take a lot of work so just take your time enjoy the process the first time and do it the way that you want if you're not at all interested in in polishing your barrel a little bit after you've draw filed it, we're not even interested in draw filing it. You know, you don't have to. There's no muzzleloader kit police as far as I'm aware. And there you have it. That's how you can go through and draw file your barrel. Give it a nice traditional look before you head into your metal finishing whatever solution that you're going for um, it takes just a little bit of time i think in total i was probably here working on this for about 45 minutes uh, really not a lot of time in the grand scheme of things especially when you consider the traditional proper look that you get out of this technique uh, again not something that you have to do but i think it's one of the better ways to have your barrel well, when you go into the metal finishing solution. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking at this. Uh, it's been kind of fun coming through here and heading into the final stretches of this kit. So keep an eye out for the next video here where we're talking about browning and building a browning chamber.